I certainly am not saying that all aid projects do harm. Um, and I think some of them do a certain amount of good. Some of them may do a lot of good. But others don't work on their own terms. And there's always the question of unintended consequences, that things that happen as a part of aid that you weren't really planning on. And I think the big problem for me is that um, is the relationship between governments and their own citizens. Um, and that I think of aid, large volumes of aid, countries where the amount of aid that's coming in is very large relative to everything else that people have, that's large relative to government expenditure, it's large relative to GDP, which is true in a lot of the poorer countries in Africa. In those countries, aid really interferes with what ought to be happening, which is the building of a developmental social contract um, between the government and its own people. And that's because if, if the government has all this money coming in from outside, it doesn't really have to pay any attention to what its own citizens want. What is the problem if, if you probably give a, a math or reading to kids? There's no problem wrong? with that. I mean, the, the problem is what happens after that. Now, if it's all being provided from outside, that system is not accountable to either the parents, the children, or to the government. It's accountable ultimately to the donors. And the donors in some sense don't really know what they're doing because they're not in the country. They can't see if that's working. They can't see. So the feedback that you'd need for a proper democratic system to work in that way is sort of cut through by this large amount of aid. So it, the, the problem is not vaccinating the kids or helping the kids to read. That's a good thing. And if aid comes along and vaccinates kids who would not otherwise be vaccinated, or it helps kids get educated who would not otherwise be educated, that is a good thing. There's nothing wrong with that. It's the system behind that, um, the unintended consequences, all the other things that go with that, that ultimately is a problem. And how do you can turn around that? Well, I actually think you sort of can't <laughs> on a large scale um, because, um, you know, if people need stuff, they have to have people there that they tell it to. You know, I mean, if you think about what happens in Switzerland, I think what happens in the US, the government provides some services for people. People run platforms on elections. They say, we'll give you this or we'll give you that. And then after so many years, the people get a chance to say, well, did you do that well or did you not do that well? And we can kick you out. Or if they behave really badly, like stealing money or something, they go to jail. I mean, there's a mechanism for doing all those things. In a world in which the money is all coming from abroad, those mechanisms are not there. You know, without a democratic or responsive um, contract of taxes and expenditures, um, then we're not free. I mean, we're not getting what we need. Um, and all those things work very imperfectly. I mean, we're sitting here in America. You know, no one thinks American democracy is a very good idea. Um, but it's so much better than what happens if your government was funded entirely by America or if the American government were entirely funded by the Swedes or the Egyptians or goodness not where. So, you know, it, we're hiding behind this humanitarian moral thing to enforce something that's not very good. But then the, the problem of the whole thing is actually that the money is coming from outside and by that disrupting this yeah, social contract. That's exactly right. And also it, it breaks down any accountability, you know, because the donors, you know, if you're Oxfam or the World Bank or someone, you're ultimately responsible to the people who are giving you the money. You're not ultimately responsible to the people you're nominally trying to help. Now there are ideas like a newly developed where you say, okay, um, we, we let local entrepreneurs, they, they come with their needs, they say I need some money for this and this project and want to have just uh, the money to come mm -hmm. in uh, to help them to do their project. Is that a possible way to go? Possibly, it depends very much on how it's set up. I mean, after all, that is, there are banks <laughs> in the US who are perfectly willing to, uh, you know, advance money to entrepreneurs in Somalia <laughs> or in, um, you know, the Democratic Republic of Congo and so on. So you'd have to ask the question as to why, you know, why does this have to be done as aid as opposed to being done by traditional means? 
and the traditional means would put an accountability upon it that's prob that may not be there if it's being done through an aid organization. The main need of an aid organization, after all, is not to finance good projects. It's to keep the money going, you know, and to keep their donors happy. And that's a different thing from developing country. So. When you have so-called failed states like yes. Haiti, Sudan, or something like that. Somalia. Somalia. Yeah. Can, can, can you do anything? Well, I think it's very hard. I mean, the very premise of your question <laughs> is sort of like, you know, what can you do when there's no police force, there's no um, enforcement of contracts, there's nothing. I mean, it's just sort of a mess. And I think the answer is extremely little. So, you know, the old literature, there's a guy called Peter Bauer, who was a very great development economist in the 70s, a um, Hungarian emigre who taught at the London School of Economics. And he always used to say, you know, if the conditions for economic growth are there, we don't need any aid. And if the conditions for progress are not there, then aid is going to be no good. So it's what I think of as the Bauer fork. You know, if you get on one side, it doesn't work, you don't need it. And if you get on the other side, it doesn't work. And that's, I think, a very deep uh, problem with aid. But basically, you're saying by that, we have to sit aside and can't no, do I'm not saying that. Not saying that. So uh, absolutely not saying that. Um, I think there really are important things we can do. And the um, one idea, um, and I think this is a really good idea, is that what you want to avoid is breaking that, helping break that social contract. There's lots of things you can do that don't involve that. And most of it is like thinking about aid in the country as opposed to aid for the country. Now, think of some things we could do. If you mm -hmm. find a vaccine for Ebola, which there's been some progress on as a result of the Ebola epidemic, that would be terrific. That would help these people in these countries. The knowledge that HIV is a sexually transmitted disease. That's basic science that came out of France and came out of the US. Um, knowing that is a huge gift to the areas of Africa that are affected by HIV AIDS because that gives you the beginning of controlling that epidemic, of, do, of people controlling it for themselves. There's lots of other situations like trade deals, for instance, where third world countries are negotiating with the US you know, if you have a trade deal between, say, Honduras and the United States, on the United States side, the pharmaceutical companies have sent their lawyers, right? These guys are being paid millions of dollars <laughs> to come and draw up this contract. In Honduras, who do you have? Okay, maybe you have some good people. I don't want to say anything about Honduras. But what resources do those countries have to help negotiate? It's just not a level playing field. Mm -hmm. The same thing happens at the WTO. You know, at all these organizations, the expertise from those countries is typically just not there. Now, I could imagine a World Bank that was set up in order to help people negotiate treaties with the U.S., help represent them, provide the expertise. Of course, that's not going to happen because the U.S. wouldn't let it happen. But, you know, there are these new development banks that are springing up around the world which are outside of the U.S., you know, between the BRICS countries, for instance, the Chinese Infrastructure Bank, and so on. And those have different operating things, and it may be possible for them to provide those, if you like, global public goods. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think ordinary people could contribute to those if the mechanisms were set up for doing that. And that production of basic knowledge of skill that countries can use for themselves would be very important. And it's, I think that's a way in which we can really help. So I mean, it's basically lobbying for the third world in the first world. Yes, or providing things, providing knowledge that's relevant for their needs. So we provide a lot of investment in knowledge that's relevant for our needs, you know, like heart disease <laughs> and so on. And that's not, you know, a lot of these countries are still wrestling with infectious diseases. And so knowing more about how to treat those would be very good. But it's not so much lobbying as just providing say, a panel of experts who could help these people negotiate deals when they're in international trade deals or bilateral trade deals with the United States or other rich countries, for example. And it would be good to have them not as disadvantaged as they are now in making those deals. That's also my answer to people to say to me, we have to do something, you know, and um, 
you know, would it be wicked not to do something? Well, there's something you can do. But also there's another side to that question. I think it's pretty cynical and pretty wicked to go on doing things that are hurting people. <laughs> you know, so there's this thing in medicine which is first do to harm. I mean, and you know, if aid is hurting people and we're doing it because it makes us feel good, you know, because we say we have to do something for these people, I spent a thousand francs or whatever it is, you know, then that's not good because you're doing it for you. You're not doing it for them. So I think it's quite cynical to go on doing things that don't work. And there are things we can do that really would work.